Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here to show you how you can mix your metal drum tracks within Reaper. You've been asking, and here it is. Now, before I get started, I just want to say this. You can download this exact session with these exact files that I'm using. There's a link below in this video's description. You can download it for absolutely free. Also, I'm only using stock plugins within Reaper. So you should be able to open up this session and see all of my settings with absolute ease. So without any further ado, let's get right to it and see how I'm mixing my metal drum tracks within Reaper. Okay, in my opinion, that's not a bad sounding drum mix. And the good news, it was extremely simple to dial in. And again, I only used stock plugins that come free with Reaper. And on top of that, I'm not even using any drum samples. These are 100% natural drum tracks. I just want to say this, I have nothing against drum samples. I use them all of the time myself. Now I'm usually using raw samples taken from the actual drum set that I'm recording. I just decided to mix this particular track using no drum samples at all. Just to show you how simple drum mixing can really be. So let's start this video off with the routing. So if we look here, we have a kick track, a snare top track, snare bottom track, rack tom, floor tom, overhead left, overhead right, room left and room right. Those are all of my audio tracks as far as drum tracks are concerned. And the way that I'm routing my drums is pretty straightforward. My kick through to my floor tom, so all of my shells are being routed to a drums submix. And I have some processing on my drum submix here. My overhead left, overhead right, room left, and room right are being sent directly to my master fader. So they are not being bussed at all. Now the reason for this is simple. I just didn't want to add any extra compression, saturation, or EQ to my overheads or my rooms. I wanted them to be very dynamic and very natural. And also I have one send effect, a basic reverb, and I'm just using the stock reverb plugin that comes with Reaper, which is the Reverberate plugin. And as far as what's being sent to the reverb, I'm sending my snare top very little, just a small amount of my snare top is being sent to my reverb, but I'm sending a boatload of my snare bottom. This is because I wanna hear more of the wet sound of my snare bottom than the actual snare bottom itself. And it's only being used in the mix very little. And outside of that, I just have a little verb on my rack tom and a little verb on my floor tom. That's it as far as send effects are concerned. I have no reverb on my kick, overheads, or room tracks. Now, like I said, my kick through to my floor tom is being bussed to a submix. This submix called drums. The first plugin on my drum submix is just a basic EQ. I'm rolling off all frequencies below around 40 hertz just to get rid of that super duper sub range that I don't really need on my drum tracks. And I'm just using a low shelf to pull out a little bit of extra low end and reduce a little bit of the lower mids. Nothing extreme. And again, I'm just using the stock Rhea EQ that comes free with Reaper. Aside from that, I just have some basic parallel compression on my drum bus. Now the way I'm achieving parallel compression is just by adjusting the wet dry knob on the actual compressor plugin within Reaper. Now I think this is an excellent feature that's available in Reaper that unfortunately is not available in my main DAW, Pro Tools. In other words, in Pro Tools, if I wanna have a wet dry mix of a plugin and the plugin doesn't have a wet dry knob built right into it, I have to do it with a send. And Reaper, they give you this nice knob here, which comes in very handy. So I didn't even have to go and create another bus to create parallel compression, which is awesome. So let's take a look and see at how much parallel compression is happening on my drum bus. So about six to eight dB of compression. And again, it's in parallel and it's mainly the dry sound you're hearing. I have my compression set to about 30% wet. Now up next, I'm just using the stock distortion that comes with Reaper just to add some analog saturation to my drum shells. And after that, I'm just using the JS limiter. Now the reason why I'm lopping off transients on my drums is to create extra headroom on my mix bus. The parallel compression and the saturation along with this limiting really helps control and limit the dynamic range of my drums in a very analog and transparent style way. And I'm doing all of this with stock Reaper plugins. So like I mentioned, these are live drums, which means there's gonna be bleed within the drum tracks. 
So because of that, on my kick drum, I'm just using the rear gate to cut out the extra snare noise or cymbal spillage that might be occurring within my kick drum mic. Very basic. It's almost like I have a channel strip here. I have a gate, an EQ where I'm pulling out some lower mids and low end and boosting a little bit of top end and upper mids as well as some basic compression. Now these processes, including the compression on my actual kick channel are all 100% wet. I'm not using parallel compression on the track itself. That was only on the drum bus. And the same goes for my snare top mic. I have my EQ where I'm rolling off all frequencies below around 100 Hertz, pulling out some lower mids, and boosting some upper mids. And I've got some basic compression just to add some pop and snap to my snare. Same goes for my snare bottom. I just got a gate and EQ. Now this EQ might seem extreme to you. And this is because I'm getting the majority of my low end and punch from my snare top mic. So I'm only using the high end sizzle from the snare bottom mic. As a matter of fact, right now I'm going to solo my snare top mic, and then I will add in my snare bottom just so you could hear how much it adds to my snare sound. So I never skimp out as far as miking my snare bottom track. I feel that it always adds a lot to my drum sounds. Now, if you look here, I'm not using a gate on my tom tracks, and this is because I've gone in and manually edited my tom tracks and cut out all of the dead space in between the tom hits. I found this method to be much better than using an actual gate because the cymbals will always trigger the gates when you don't want them to. Now, I know it takes a little bit of time up front to edit your tom tracks, but in my opinion, it'll save you time in the long run when your drum mix will be a breeze. So on my toms, I have an EQ. This is the EQ on my rack tom, pulling out some lower mids, boosting some top end, rolling off all frequencies below around 70 Hertz, very similar EQ on my rack tom, and just some basic compression, just to add a little bit of snap to my toms. Now, as far as my overhead tracks, I'm not using any compression at all. This is because I was happy with the way the drummer was playing and he didn't smash the cymbal, then play lightly. He was a very balanced player. So I didn't have to use a lot of compression. Also, over compressing your overheads will bring up the hi-hat way too much and can really destroy your mix. Hi-hats are annoying. So on my overheads, I'm just using some subtle saturation just to add some analog vibe to my overhead tracks. Now, as far as the EQ on my overheads, again, it looks pretty extreme. But the reason for this is simple. All of this mid-range is being filled in by my drum room tracks. So I don't really need excess mid-range in my overhead tracks because I'm already getting that information from my close mics as well as my room mics. I think of overheads, especially in hard rock and metal, as cymbal mics. I don't care what my drum set sounds like in my overheads. I'm using them just to capture the cymbals. And I'm gonna bypass all my plugins and then I will re-engage the plugins so you could hear what they're doing to my actual cymbal tracks. Let's check it out. So as you can tell, the EQs are doing a whole lot. They're pretty much completely removing, for the most part, all of my drums from my overhead tracks, which is what I want. Now, some more traditional engineers get bent out of shape when they see people do this. And this is because traditionally, like what I learned in school, engineers usually try to grab a stereo image of their entire kit in their overheads. But like I've said in previous videos, this rarely works for modern rock and modern metal. Indie rock, folk, jazz, country, that approach might work well for those genres, but rarely for heavy drum recording. So with that being said, let's move on to our room tracks. Again, I'm just using distortion to warm up my room tracks, and I'm filtering out a bunch of low end and a bunch of top end and notching out a little bit of boxiness in the lower mids. Now I'm gonna play the track back and then I will re-engage the plugins as the track is playing back so you could hear what kind of an effect they have on my drum rooms. And my drum rooms are really what's filling out my drum sound. Let's check it out. Yeah, so as you can hear, my drum rooms really add a nice natural ambience to the entire kit and really help glue it together. I'm more a fan of using room mics to glue my kit together than a ton of processing and compression. That's just me. I also want to mention this. These drums were recorded in a home studio with cheap budget gear. As a matter of fact, the interface that was used was an old cheapo PreSonus Digimax. So not only am I using a $60 DAW with stock plugins, the track was recorded in a home studio with no acoustic treatment with cheap gear. 
Now, if that doesn't convince you that gear is overrated, I don't know what to tell you. So let's hear the sample once more from the top. So there you have it. That's how you can mix drums within Reaper using only stock plugins without even using drum samples. And again, you could download this exact session for absolutely free. There's a link below in this video's description. It includes the session, all of my plugin settings, as well as all of the files that I'm using within this mix. Download it and use it as a template or a starting point for your own mixes. So tell me, are you a Reaper user? Me personally, I'm actually more of a Pro Tools user, but Reaper really is a steal. For $60, it's pretty incredible. So tell me if you use it. I'd love to hear if it's your DAW of choice. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. And again, you can download this exact session for absolutely free. There's a link below in this video's description. Till next time, happy mixing.